if you're looking for the absolute best robot vacuum in the market, the Eureka E10S is not that. But if you're looking for something that does a decent job at a decent price, Eureka might be onto something. In fact, it has two awesome features that you're not going to find at even the most elite robot vacuums. Are they enough to make this worth purchasing? Let's find out. Jumping right into it, the first awesome feature on the Eureka E10S is a completely bagless collection system. There's no bag in the robot, then when it returns to the base station, all the crud gets sucked into the canister and there's no bag there either. The canister has a clear design so you can watch it work its magic. Then you can proudly display all of your filth for all of your friends and family to see. When it's full, just pull it out and empty it into the trash. Easy peasy. It saves you time and it saves you money over those stupid vacuum bags. Some people try to tell you that vacuum bags are somehow superior, but they're wrong and they don't have any friends. Before we get to the second awesome feature, let's review some of the more standard features of the Eureka E10S. For starters, it is both a robot vacuum and mop. It has two spinny brushes on the outside of the vacuum that kick debris to the middle of the vacuum path where it can be sucked up by the bigger spinny brush. This design actually does a better job than I expected when I first saw it. The occasional crumb might get flung out of the vacuum path, but for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. If you have a really big mess like this one, you'll probably want to do two or three passes and whatever pieces get flung on the first pass will get picked up on the next go round. On both hard surfaces and carpet, I felt it did a really good job picking up crumbs, dust, and hair. It's also relatively quiet, which is a big plus. Overall, the vacuum part of the vacuum gets a thumbs up from me. The mop, on the other hand... So, if you told your teenage son to mop the floor and he just took a damp rag and dragged it slowly around the kitchen while he checked his Instagram feed, that's kind of the level of mopping quality you're going to get with the E10S. I mean, it's better than nothing, and if you run it over a tough spot a couple times, you know, it does a somewhat passable job, but I don't know what more to tell you. It's room temperature water on a thin pad, casually slid along the floor. Set your expectations accordingly. The vacuum does have the ability to sense if it is on carpet or hard floor, and it will raise the mop pad 10 centimeters when necessary, so it doesn't soak the carpet. You can also designate areas on the map as no mop zones, where it will raise up the mop pad regardless of the surface. Creating the map is pretty slick. Once you set up the base station and download the Eureka app, you basically just let it go and the robot cruises around mapping your house as it vacuums. It uses LiDAR to sense walls and obstacles and does a really good job of mapping. Do not buy a robot vacuum without LiDAR. Ever. After the map is created, you can divide it into multiple rooms and add no-go zones, no mop zones, and virtual walls. This virtual wall thing is a good feature if you have a step down between rooms because before I added the virtual wall here, the Eureka tried desperately to get into the family room. Fortunately, it has a pretty good anti-suicide feature that prevents it from tumbling down the stairs, but it certainly wanted to. You can save up to three maps in the Eureka app if you have multiple floors or if you want to pool your money together and share the vacuum with a couple neighbors. I don't recommend it. My favorite feature of the map is the ability to create very specific zones for an immediate cleaning. So if you spill something, you can just highlight that area for the vacuum to clean so you don't have to stop watching bowling and ESPN3 and clean it up yourself. Inside the app, you can also set the water level and suction level and set a schedule for automatic cleaning. If there's one thing I've learned about robot vacuums is that no matter how smart they claim to be, they are all stupid in their own way, and the Eureka E10S is no exception. I have yet to see this thing get stuck, and I've watched it get out of some pretty tight jams, so it is smarter than some of the much more expensive vacuums in that respect. It also has yet to get confused and start wandering aimlessly through the house, which was a pleasant surprise, especially at this price point. But when it comes to optical avoidance, I'd say it's about on par with a 95-year-old grandma driving through a Walmart parking lot. You know, she's probably not going to crash into the building, but shopping carts, lampposts, and toddlers, they are all in play. With the Eureka E10S, you can see it does an excellent job avoiding large objects, but it will attack small toys, cords, and Weird Al Yankovic with no remorse. In addition to picking up small items before running the vacuum, you have to fill the water tank on the vacuum every couple runs if you're using the mop. The mop pad should also be removed and cleaned every once in a while too. Also, if you have a dog, you'll have to clean the brush every few runs or it'll stop being very effective. It's not hard to do, and it even comes with a helpful tool that I've already lost. It's just remembering to do it that I struggle with. But the bagless canister could not be easier to empty, so that's a big win. While the Eureka E10S may not have the best mop, and it likes to ram into things, it does a solid job vacuuming, and it doesn't give me any headaches, and I appreciate that. And you know what else I appreciate that this vacuum provides that the Premier Robot vacuums do not? An extra thousand dollars in my pocket. You can pay more and you'll get a vacuum with spinning, scrubbing mop pads, more custom settings, and maybe a camera and some other bells and whistles. But there's still no robot vacuum out there good enough to completely replace the need to mop yourself every once in a while. So to me, I'll take the extra thousand dollars in my pocket that I can do something fun with over a motorized mop pad. 
The E10S manual says it needs 1.6 feet of clearance on both sides of the base station to work. But screw that, I wanna put it in my closet. So I did, and I'm happy to say it works just fine. And when I put this shock sensor on the vacuum, it actually sends a signal to my hub when it starts running, and then the hub will automatically open the closet door. So now I can keep it hidden in the closet and still run it on a schedule, even if I'm not home. And if you wanna see how I did that closet trick, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.